guys, we are out in the middle of the Maasai Mara. We have got lions stalking. I don't know what. I can only see them in infrared. Um, I don't know what they are right in front of them. But it's something quite close. I don't know. It could even be other lions. Oh, we don't know what it is. Whatever it is, just... Stormed away. I think it was zebra. They spotted the lions, but the lions aren't trying to be particularly uh, cautious at the moment. Now, this is a pride we've never seen before. I think it's called the Porungat pride after the bridge across the Mara R River. But you see them, Dave? No, I've lost them. Oh, they're right next to us in the long grass. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking. The, oh, is that one there? there so I'm looking through uh, a thermal imagery. So I get their, their body heat. And even with the thermal energy, sometimes we lose them if they go into really thick grass. Oh, that was very good. I turned my lights on, isn't it, Dave? There's a large hole in front of us. Okay, now, we found these lions a while ago. And they were finishing off a wildebeest. Now, we are right. Whoa, there's another big steep hill where the migration is has just come in from Tanzania. There are hundreds of thousands of wildebeest around us. Oh, see, that's what I mean. I've got, I got to keep my eye on these lions. They disappear into this long grass. And of course, driving at night, one has to be quite careful. Because we don't know what hole or what not's in front of us. I have lost the lions in the long grass. Which way did they go? There they are. Now we are heading towards where there are thousands of wildebeest right now. Now, those lions, as I said, they've already eaten at least one wildebeest tonight. There we go, there they are. You see them, Dave? Oh, there's a big termite mound. Oh no, that's the young boys. Now there are five sub-adults in this pride and uh, only two adult lionesses. There's another sub-adult there. Now, I've lost sight of the two adult lionesses, so what I've got, uh, I think they're up ahead of them. I can just make out another heat signature in the distance. Now, what I'm expecting to see at some point is literally just a mass of heat in front of me, because we are heading towards this constant sound. And look, he's made a, a piggy of himself. He's eaten most of that last wildebeest. We can hear all the wildebeest around us. Now we're with the young boys, and when we found them, they were munching away much better on a, quite a young wildebeest, so not too big a wildebeest. We can hear lions contact calling next to us. I can see another two to the left. Just right opposite you, Dave. Let me check if it's one of the adults. No, another young boy. Another young boy. Ah, there we go. There's an adult female at the back, I think. Yes, there's one of the moms. So there's 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 two different ages, three different ages, sorry. Um, of sub-adults here. Now remember, this is live lion behavior coming to you from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And uh, we're not, we're playing to nature's rules. We're only going live when they're getting moving. And uh, what are you going to do now? And we've, we've still lost one lioness. This looks like a fat tummied young male coming in in front of us. And I know we've got one lioness off. Oh, she's gone flat as well. Now, but this is the, the thing about lions hunting. Move, fail, sleep. Move, fail, sleep. Now, you would think they would move a little bit further to the east of us where the majority of the... Oh, you silly cat! 
ate so much full the rest you're stepping in holes. So we think this is the Purungut Pride. We're not 100% sure. We have not spent much time in this area. Now, James and Jamie are also out there, but I'm probably, oof, as the crow fires, 40 kilometers, I guess. I'm trying to think where our far receiver in this part of the world is um, from James and Jamie, who are up north around Ngama. We're Dave, or dangerous Dave and myself, are staying at Sala's camp this evening. Well, we might not stay anywhere. We might stay in the car next to the lions for the whole night. And that's the only... Is that a young male? No, that looks like... So, it's four young males and one young female. And it looks like they've all gone to sleep again. Uh, there were some zebra very close to them, but I think the zebra were in this area where we are now with this slightly less long grass. Now, I'm not convinced this is the full pride. So, the adult lionesses have been contact calling for about... Oof, how long have we been here now, Dave? Mm, sure, I don't know. Two, three hours? Three hours? Um, and he just says... Oh, oh, oh. And uh, they're not roaring loudly, they're just like that, contact calling. And that means I think there is more members of this pride somewhere out in the darkness that surrounds us. Now, I can only see that line behind the termite mound because of the infrared. Well, now, oh, I can just see it. <laughs> but I was going to say, uh, if we, ha we had to switch off that infrared, we would be completely surrounded by blackness. Wait. I think I hear contact calling again. Let me put up my thermal. Yes, to the right of us I can hear contact calling. Hi, Tinas. Tinas would like to know, are these lions bigger here than the ones in Juma. I'd say they're probably slightly heavier and again Tinas that's just due to the fact that there's so much available food. Here she comes. She obviously had a proper go after those zebra and that's why we heard them stampeding. Um, I don't think you're going to see her Dave. I can just make out her heat signature coming through the grass directly there. Now let me see if I can hear her. Ooh. There we go, she should be popping out. There she is. So there's the other adult lioness that we lost. She obviously had a proper go at those zebra. Hence the stampeding. Because I thought, wow, these cubs were a bit far away and the other lioness was a bit far away for the zebra to react that badly. So she'd obviously snuck a bit closer. So now she's calling for the rest of the pride. So we could get some very nice greeting. Now, even though they have eaten today, the two adults are not that full. And you can see, Tennis, you see that stocky, muscular frame. Uh, and I do think probably on average they are of bigger body size and heavier uh, than uh, the greater Kruger lions. That's generally just because of the amount of available food. Oops, sorry. I was staring through my thermal monocular to try to see if there was anything else about. Now she's very distinct. Now we're going to have to remember her. It looks like she's got a growth on her belly on the other side. Hi big girl. Very distinctive ears as well. Notches out of both. And she's going right behind us now. See how the other, others are just sleeping there, off to the left still. So as you can see, this is how I'm keeping track of everything that's happening around me. And uh, I'm basically seeing a blood red lion. Okay, let me just move the car quickly. So now Dave's taken it out of infrared. And, um, and I just have those little lights on to make sure I can, don't drive over a lion. Actually, I, I normally use this rather. It's become quite interesting. Uh, being out at night, I've had it glued to my my eye. Ok, 
Yeah, there we go. It looks like they're up again. They're greeting. There we go. And so Dave's, that's what we're seeing. There we go. And then all of a sudden, infrared light on. Oh, she's still behind us. I'm just going to reverse a bit more. Now remember, this is coming to you live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And we literally have no idea what's going to happen next. These lions have just unsuccessfully tried to catch some zebra. And uh, the lioness who, who put the most effort in is now returning. And uh, by the looks of fatty there, going, more, more, Mom, I'm hungry again. Why don't you get me a zebra? Megan is wondering how many are in this pride. Megan, as I said, I'm not sure. Um, I can tell you for certain there are seven uh, lions in this pride, but I said with all the contact calling that's been going on, I think there might be a bit few more that they're trying to find them. And it's not uncommon for prides in this area to split into different groups. There is so much food around uh, that there isn't really a necessity to spend all their time together. Now, quite often, the only reason that a big pride would come together in this area is to defend their territory from another lion. Okay, where are we now? Oh, there's the termite lion. Just want to make sure there's no lions too close to us. No, they're over there. On the move again. Wasn't there a big hole around here somewhere, Dave? to the left there. So isn't this is exciting? Um, and you know, we've spent pretty much all our time since about 6.30 um, Kenyan time with these lions and uh, even though they were eating a wildebeest when we found them there wasn't much left of it and just by looking at the two females I thought they would get up and moving tonight and uh, they are very close to the main body of the migration. There we go, lights off. Oh, they're on the move again. Oh, sorry, Dave. Oh, they're right there. Sorry, I'm so busy looking through my thermal scope. Uh, Roshni's wondering what age that these young male lions would start helping. Oh, there's to my mound. Um, with the hunt. Uh, not for a while yet, these guys are probably a year and a half or so, so I'm just going to change into first gear. You always better be very careful when driving off-road at night. Um, always engaged, low range, and as a general rule, I never jump out of second gear, because I don't know what's ahead of me. I could crash into a warthog hole or find a rock, and the lines are all over here. And it looks like they're going into a thicket. I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow them. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get through this thicket. I'm going to have to try and move around. They've all stopped all of a sudden. Like they're listening. And now... Some of them are flopping down to sleep. So, um, we are still going to be out here for a little while longer. Uh, we're going to see what might happen. And uh, so stay tuned. You never know what's going to happen on Safari Live when the crew is out in the dark in the Masai Mara.